I didn't care More than words can say If I didn't care Would I feel this way If this isn't love Then why do I thrill Mr. Duke Rain, describe the confrontation you had with your wife the night she was murdered. It was very bitter. She said she was glad I knew that she had hated all the sneaking around. She said she wanted a divorce in Reno. And what was your response? I told her I would not grant one. I'll see you in hell before I see you in Reno. Those were the words you used, Mr. Dufresne. According to the testimony of your neighbors. If they say so. I really don't remember. I was so upset. Cut. What happened after you and your wife argued? She packed a bag and I went, I went to stay with Mr. Quinton. Glenn Quinton, the golf pro at the Falmouth Hills Country Club, the man you had recently discovered was her lover. Did you follow her? <laughs> Went to a few bars. Later, I decided to drive to Mr. Quinton's home and confront them. They weren't there, so I parked in the turnout and waited. With what intention? I'm not sure. I was confused, drunk. I think I mostly wanted to scare them. You had a gun with you? Yes, I did. When they arrived, you went up to the house and murdered them. No, I was sobering up. I realized she wasn't worth it. I decided let her have a quickie divorce. Quickie divorce indeed. A 38 caliber divorce wrapped in a hand towel to muffle the shots. Isn't that what you mean? And then you shot her lover. I did not. I got back in my car and I drove home to sleep it off. Along the way, I stopped and threw the gun in the Royal River. I feel I've been very clear on this point. Yes, you have. Where I get hazy, though, is the part where the cleaning woman shows up the next morning and finds your wife and her lover in bed riddled with 38 caliber bullets. Does that strike you as a fantastic coincidence, Mr. Dufresne, or is it just me? <coughs> yes. It does. Does what? Strike me as a fantastic coincidence. On that, sir, we are in accord. You claim you threw your gun into the Royal River before the murders took place. That's rather convenient. It's... It's the truth. You recall Lieutenant Mitchell's testimony? He and his men dragged that river for three days and nary a gun was found. So no comparison can be made between your gun and the bullets taken from the blood-stained corpses of the victims. That's also rather convenient, isn't it, Mr. Dufresne? Since I'm innocent of this crime, sir, I find it deceptively inconvenient that the gun was never found. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard all the evidence. You know all the facts. We have the accused at the scene of the crime. We have footprints, tire tracks, bullets scattered on the ground which bear his fingerprints. A broken bourbon bottle, likewise with his fingerprints. Most of all, we have a beautiful young woman and her lover lying dead in each other's arms. They had sinned, but was their crime so great as to merit a death sentence? I suspect Mr. Dufresne's answer to that would be yes. I further suspect he carried out that sentence on the night of September 21st, this year of our Lord, 1946, by pumping four bullets into his wife and another four into Glenn Quinton. And while you think about that, think about this. I need the gun now. Where's the gun? A revolver holds six bullets, not eight. 
I submit to you that this was not a hot-blooded crime of passion. That could at least be understood if not condoned. No, this was a revenge of a much more brutal and cold-blooded nature. Consider four bullets per victim, not six, not six shots fired, but eight. That means he fired the gun empty and then stopped to reload so he could shoot each of them again. An extra bullet per lover, right in the head. I'm done talking. You people are all decent, god fan Christian folk. You know what to do. Guilty. 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 You strike me as a particularly icy and remorseless man, Mr. Dufresne, and it chills my blood just to look at you. By the power vested in me by the state of Maine, I hereby order you to serve two life sentences, back to back, one for each of your victims. So be it. <laughs> We see by your file that you've served 20 years of a life sentence. You feel you've been rehabilitated? Uh, yes, sir. Absolutely. I've learned my lesson. I can honestly say I'm a changed man. I'm no longer a danger to society. That's God's honest truth. No doubt about it. Calm like me in every prison in America, I guess. I'm the guy who can get it for you. Cigarettes, a bag of refill if you're partial, a bottle of brandy to celebrate kids' high school graduation. Damn near anything within reason. Yes, sir. I'm a regular Sears and Roebuck. So when Andy Dufresne came to me in 1949 and asked me to smother Rita Hayworth in a prison for him, I told him no problem. And it wasn't. Fresh fish. Fresh fish. Andy came to Shawshank Prison in early 1947 for murdering his wife from the fella she was banging. On the outside, he'd been vice president of a large Portland bank. Good work for a man as young as he was. Press fish, press fish. Here they are, boys. I've never seen such a sorry looking heap of maggot shit in all my life. Coming from you, Haywood. You being so pretty and all. Taking bets today, Red? Smokes or coin, boys. Better's choice. Smokes, put me down for two. Parola, what's your horse? Let Gangly sack of shit. Heard from the front. He'll be the first. Bullshit. I'll take that action. Me too. You're out some smoke, son. Take my word. You so smart, you call it. I say that chubby fat ass. Let's see. Fifth from the front. Put me down for a corner dick. That's five cigarettes on fat ass. I must admit, I didn't think much of him, Randy, first time I laid eyes on him. He might have been important on the outside, 
And in here, he was just a little tub in prison graze. Looked like a stiff breeze could blow him over. That was my first impression of the man. What say you, Red? Little fella on the end, definitely. I stake half a pack. Any takers? Come on, boys. Who's gonna prove me wrong? This is Mr. Hadley, Captain of the Guard. I am Mr. Knott, the Warden. You are sinners and scum. That's why they sent you to me. Rule number one, no blaspheming. I'll not have the Lord's name taken in vain in my prison. The other rules you'll figure out as you go along. Any questions? When do we eat? You eat when we say you eat. You piss when we say you piss. Any other questions? I believe in two things. Discipline and the Bible. Here, you will receive both. Put your faith in the Lord because your ass belongs to me. Welcome to Shawshank. Turn around! Delouse him! The first night's the toughest, no doubt about it. They march you in naked as the day you were born. Fresh from a Bible reading, skin burning and half blind from that delousing shit they throw on you. And when they put you in that cell, when those bars slam home. That's when you know it's for real. Whole life blown away in the blink of an eye. A long cold season in hell stretching out ahead. Nothing left but all the time in the world just to think about it. Most new fish Come close to madness the first night. Somebody always, always breaks down crying. Happens every time. Only question is, who's it gonna be? It's as good a thing to bet on as any, I guess. I have my money on Andy Dufresne. Okay, ladies, lights out! I remember my first night. Seems like a long time ago. The boys always go fishing with first timers. They don't quit till they reel someone in. He said it. Oh, Paris! Talk to me, boy. I know you're there. I can hear you breathing. No, don't you listen to these bitches, but you hear? You hear? Paris! Fresh fish! Hey, fishy! in such a bad place. I'll introduce you man, make you feel right at home. I know some big old bull queers would love to make you acquaintance, especially that big white mushy butt of yours. I'm not supposed to be here. Help me. I'm not supposed to be here. And it's fat and it's by nose. What in Christ's name is this? 
What is your malfunction? You bear the monkey's bone? Please, I'm not supposed to. You always shut your mouth. You don't understand. Oh, I will sing you a lullaby. You don't understand. Get him out. I'm not supposed to be here, please. Get him out of this. Please. You don't understand. I'm not supposed to be here. Wing North Player! Bay Wing South Player! I Wing North Player! I Wing South Player! North Player! Say Wing South Player! Day Wing Player! A Wing North Player! A Bay Wing Player! Excuse me, are you going to take me? Ah. I hadn't planned on this. What? Do you mind? Do you mind? Be my guest. Mmm, nice and ripe. Jake says thanks fell out of his nest over the plate shop. I'm looking after him till he's old enough to fly. Alright. Oh Christ, here he comes! Morning boys. It's a fine morning. You know why it's fine? That's right, send them all down. I want to see them lined up in a row, but here's a chorus line. <sighs> Smell my ass! Ed, terrible shame, your horse coming in last and all. Hell, I sure do love that horse of mine. I believe I owe that boy a big sloppy kiss when I see him. Why don't you give him some of your cigarettes instead, you cheap bastard? See, Tyrell, did you pull infirmary duty this week? How's that winning horse of mine, anyway? Dead. Haley busted his head pretty good. Doc already went home for the night. Poor bastard lay there till the morning. By then... What was his name? What? What'd you say? I was wondering if anyone knew his name. But do you care, new fish? Doesn't matter what his fucking name was, he's dead. Hey boy. Anybody get to you yet? Y'all need a friend in here. I could be a friend to you. Mm. Hard to get. I like that. And he kept pretty much to himself at first. I guess he had a lot on his mind trying to adapt to life on the inside. 
It wasn't until a month went by that he finally opened his mouth to say two words to anybody. And as it turns out, that somebody was me. Hello, I'm Andy Dufresne. Wife killing banker. How'd you know that? I keep my ear to the ground. Why'd you do it? I didn't since you asked. Here, you fit right in. Everybody's innocent here. Didn't you know that? Hey, well, what you in here for? I didn't do it. Lawyer, but me. What else you heard? People say you're a cold fish. You think your shit smells sweeter than most. That true? What do you think? I ain't made up my mind. I understand you're a man who knows how to get things. I'm known to locate certain things from time to time. They seem to just fall onto my lap. Wondering if you can get me a rock hammer. What is it and why? You make your customers' motives part of your business? If you wanted a toothbrush, I wouldn't ask any questions. I'd just quote you a price. You see, a toothbrush is a non-lethal item. Fair enough. A rock hammer is about eight, nine inches long. Looks like a miniature pickaxe with a small, sharp pick on the end. And a blunt hammer on the other side. It's for rocks. Rocks? Quartz. Quartz. Mica. Shell. And some limestone. So, I'm a rock hound. At least I was in my old life, and I'd like to be again on a limited basis. Yeah, that, or well, maybe you want to plant your toy in somebody's skull. I have no enemies here. No? Wait a while. Word gets around. The sisters have taken a shine to you. Yes, they have. Especially Boggs. Tell me something. Would it help if I explain to them I'm not homosexual? Neither are they. You have to be human first. They don't qualify. Bull queers take by force. It's all they've ever known. If I were you, I'd learn to grow eyes in the back of your head. Well, thanks for the advice. That comes for free, but you understand my concern. If there's trouble, I doubt a rock, ham a rock hammer would help. If they find it, you don't know my name. We never met. And we never do business again. Not for a stick of gum? Not for a stick of gum or some shoe shine. What's this item usually go for? Seven dollars in any rock and gem shop. My stand up markup's 20%. We're talking about a special item. The risk goes up, price goes up. Okay. Call it an even 10 bucks. 10 it is. I'll see what I can do, but it's a waste of money. No. Folks who run this place love surprise inspections. They turn a blind eye to some things, but not a gadget like that. They find it, and you'll lose it. Like I said, not a stick of gum or some shoe shine. I understand. Thank you, Mr. Uh... The name's Ray. Why'd they call you that? I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm Algerian. Mm. 
Red. Pleasure doing business with you. I could see why some of the boys took him for snobby. He had a quiet way about him. A walk and a talk that just was not normal around here. He strolled like a man in a park without a care or worry. Like he had on an invisible coat that would shield him from this place. Yes, I think it would be fair to say I liked Andy from the start. Finally got the joke, and it was right. It would take a man 600 years to tunnel out of the wall with one of these. Tell you that Andy fought the good fight and the sisters let him be. I wish I could tell you that. But prison is no fairy tale world. He never said who did it, but we all knew. show up with fresh bruises. He always fought. That's what I remember. He fought because he knew if he didn't fight, it would make it that much easier not to fight the next time. Half the time, it landed him in the infirmary. The other half, it landed him in solitude. And that's how it went for Andy. That was his routine. I do believe those first two years were the worst for him. And I also believe if things had gone on that way, this place would have gotten the best of him. But then, in the spring of 1949, the powers that be decided that 